Hello, guys. Welcome, everybody, to Purple Haze Podcast. I am your host, Isaac, here, who bleeds purple and gold here. So the Vikings, they fall now to 7-9 and nine after losing to the Green Bay Packers at U.S. Bank Stadium. Final score, 33-10. to 10. This was a big game, man. This was a big game. The Steelers beat the Seahawks, which means that you absolutely controlled your own destiny from here on out, including the Packers game on Sunday night. And then if you win both of those games... You're in the playoffs no matter what. But they didn't show up today. They absolutely are collecting paychecks. Last on Sunday night, they collected paychecks for doing nothing. And that's a crime in itself, man. Because if I'm just sitting here watching the Vikings just play, where's my paycheck? Shouldn't I get a paycheck for apparently doing nothing and just cheering for my team if that's all I'm doing? Hmm? So time of possession. The Packers held the ball 15 minutes longer than the Vikings. Vikings total yards, 211 yards, 144 passing yards, 67 rushing yards. They forced one turnover, 13 first downs, 3 of 10 on the third down conversions, 0 sacks. The Packers... 470 total yards, 293 passing yards, 177 rushing yards, two, they forced two turnovers, 28 first downs, 9 of 14 on their third down conversions, four sacks. Those are apathetic stats right there, man. That's, that is crazy, man. As far as some of the effort that was out there, really, there's only three players that really showed up. Ty Chandler, who had 10 for 40. Justin Jefferson had 5 for 59. And Jordan Addison had 3 for 28. So I really do appreciate the effort. They earned their paychecks. Everybody else, you guys don't deserve to get paid. After that piece of crap that we saw out there Sunday. Are you kidding me? I thought they would at least show up and make it a fight. Turns out I was wrong. I was wrong. And so, Jaron Hall, I mean, maybe with some parts. I mean, I was excited. This is the game I was excited to see with Jaron Hall, you know. Jaron Hall, I mean... Sure, there were a few things, but it's totally unfair for this dude right here. He had a 50% completion rate, 60, I mean, 5 for 10 for 50%, 67 yards through one interception. He had two turnovers, as a matter of fact, but both of them, one of them was on Johnny Mutt, where, yes, he threw it a little bit behind him, but that... But he had it in his hands and he dropped it and it rolled, resulted in an interception. And one of them thanks the offensive line for not for not protecting, which it was a blind side hit and he fumbled the ball. So and the the team around him and the coach did not do him any favors whatsoever. And that is such a shame. I feel so bad for Jaron Hall after this game. Nick Mullins, and then this is this is strange. KOC decides to put in after Jaron Hall after the first half. Really, you only give him a half game. You don't give him a chance at all. Nick Mullins didn't do any better. Fifty nine percent completion rate, one hundred thirteen yards, one TD. He he almost had two picks, mind you, also as well. So he was not any better. He was not any better. He was basically just much worse. And and also Johnny Munt also gave up on a... He basically dropped a pass which resulted in Jaron Hall's interception. The O-line was some sauce out there. That was the worst offensive line I've seen this season. Especially Christian Derrissaw. Man, this dude looked like he... He was getting pushed around by Preston Smith all game long. He, he, If he was not giving up pressures to Zach, he was giving up penalties. That's unacceptable. 
The defense, what was that? Brian Flores, really? I mean, come on, dude. The defense, Jordan Love had a 72% completion rate, 256 yards, three touchdowns, two of their receivers. Who is Bo Melton? Bo Melton, six catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Jaden Reed had six for 89, two touchdowns. And the pass rush, Daniel Hunter, Harrison Phillips, Jonathan Bullard, and Patrick Jones. Where were any of you at? Not from any of you. You guys were just too busy just skating on ice. And the run defense was atrocious. Missed tackles. Oh my lord. There were so many of them. And it just didn't continue in the first half. It continued throughout the second half. Aaron Jones had 20 carries for 120 yards. 6 yards a carry. That's unacceptable as well. That's unacceptable. He's just able to watch through and just slip through butter. The secondary was Swiss cheese too as well. There was a lot of miscommunication. They all looked lost. And the average distance between the Vikings secondary and the Packers wide receivers when they caught the ball, I would say is like five yards. That's the average in KOC. I'm I'm no excuses for this guy. I'm not I'm not excusing this guy. Your team was crap. Your team did not show up on Sunday with knowing that you have the playoffs on the line and your team looks like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And also there's two things that I'm going to call out about KOC right about now is that you're, you did not give Jaron Hall a chance. This is why I put this on KOC for the Jaron Hall situation. You finally decided to put him in and let's actually back up for a second. Let's back up for a second. For Joshua Dobbs, he won you two big games against the Saints and the Falcons starting with the Broncos game. Two turnovers against the Chicago Bears on Monday Night Football. Four. You let him play three quarters of the Raiders game. And then you put in, and then now comes in Nick Mullins for the fourth quarter. You put him in there. And then you have him play the Cincinnati Bengals game with two turnovers. And then against the Detroit Lions, four turnovers. Okay. Jaron Hall, just a half a game against the Packers. And once he turns the ball over, he's like, that's it. We're done here. We don't need to see more of Jaron Hall. And yet Joshua Dobbs, Nick Mullins, they have, they have more, they have been in the NFL for such a long time. We already know who they are. And Jaron Hall, who's trying to figure out who he is and, You don't do anything for him. And not to mention your play calling as well. Not to mention your play calling. It was terrible. With Jaron Hall, you were throwing play action passes. You should have known that the offensive line throughout the first quarter that that wasn't working. You could have either done slants, screen passes, check downs. I don't know. Help Jaron Hall out. And instead... You leave him out for just a half a game, and then you go back to Nick Mullins, who didn't do any better. Good job. You absolutely single-handedly sabotaged Jaron Hall's confidence in there. That's a shame on you, man. That's shame on you for that. And not to mention also the audacity, basically, man. I mean, it's just... A disgrace because you gave him a you gave Nick Mullins and Joshua Dobbs who turned the ball just as much as over and which basically says after this game maybe he will figure it out and then after the Bears game for Joshua Dobbs after the Broncos game where he wasn't so hot maybe the Bears game like maybe he's something and then maybe the Raiders you're like eh maybe he's maybe he might be better 
and Nick Mullins, you said after the Bengals game, maybe he might be better after the Lions game. And then you don't give Jaron Hall a chance in this game. You only gave him a half a game. And you said it yourself that you don't want to turn over the ball at all earlier this season. You will find other guys who will take the ball, care of the ball. And yet, if those were your words, then you, and yet, Jaron Hall, who, and yet, Nick Mullins and Joshua Dobbs, who turned the ball over, and then when starting Jaron Hall, and yet, you turn back to Nick Mullins on a heartbeat. Explain that one to me, hmm? You do all this, you talk. And you don't do action, and you and you have no actions. It's all Jaron Hall's fault, apparently. That's the narrative right of this game. Great, now we have a scapegoat for who the actual culprit of the game is. And the crazy thing is, I can't imagine just getting paychecks for for not showing any effort. And that's what your players do. And also, all the camera angles that showed that you showed on there, you instead of having some fire on your belly and get your guys going like, hey, let's go. Let's get back in the instead, you're just staring in space, just sitting there on the sidelines, just pouting and oh man, oh our team is down. We're we're not coming back. That's you. You're a joke, dude, Kevin O'Connell. I tried everything to defend you. I'm not. I'm not. Such a shame. Now I think the playoffs, I think we're not going anywhere. After getting smacked like that, after showing no heart, after showing no pride, after being soft, you basically deserve, you don't deserve to get paid, but the sad truth is, that you are, you are getting paid millions. So, so congratulations on stealing money. KOC with two years, 17 weeks, and you don't have a clue. Absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Skull.